This video feels hugely significant. As a channel, we've tended to err on the side of caution when it comes to omega-3 supplements for vegans, siding with Dr. Greger and Dr. Scherzai, who advocate for EPA DHA supplementation for those on a 100% plant-based diet. However, Dr. Michael Clapper had been quite vocal against not taking omega-3 supplements due to the concern of possible increased prostate cancer risk and also because this study found that DHA supplementation inhibited the clearance of EPA by preventing EPA metabolism. And he was concerned that we didn't know what impact that would have on the body long term. We looked at this in depth in a previous video. It's worth watching that video if you missed it as we may take it down shortly. However, recently Dr. Clapper posted a very important and slightly worrying update, so let's take a listen. Those of you who've been following my work for a while know that for the past little over two years, I've been trying to discern whether it makes sense for me to be taking supplemental DHA and EPA. These are long chain omega-3 fatty acids that are needed for cell membrane construction throughout the body and very importantly for brain performance. And they have other uh, anti-inflammatory effects, etc. They are essential nutrients in the body. The question is whether we make enough of these substances to prevent dementia, to preserve our cognitive function. And so I did some testing that I would like to share with you and it'll help you understand why I've reached the conclusions that I have. I'll point out the CORA study here. This was done on 720 men and women between 68 and 92. And what they did find in this group uh, was that the lower the omega-3 index levels were associated with a higher risk of cognitive impairment. Hmm, interesting, and that's the omega-3 index. What were my values? I had my first test done March of 2020, and my omega-3 index was 4.46. So the total amount of EPA and DHA in my red cell ghost divided by the total fats was 4.46%. Well, again, uh, two years ago, two and a half years ago, I was at 4.46. I then did not, I was taking DHA and EPA for years. I stopped doing that, stopped emphasizing the omega-3 rich the walnuts and flax seeds, et cetera, in my diet for a year, rechecked my omega-3 level and found that my 4.46% had now dropped down to 3.73. So I said, well, let's do a little experiment here. Let me go on an omega-3 intensive. We got uh, flax seeds and chia seeds and hemp seeds, ground them up in a big jar of that, put two big tablespoons of the ground hemp and flax and chia on my oatmeal every morning, big handful of walnuts every day, lots of extra dark green leafy vegetables, really boost up my omega-3 containing foods for intensely a year, rechecked my omega-3 index and found it had dropped down to 3.55. Now, it's been well known that increasing omega-3 rich foods may not change your omega-3 index here. We, we kind of expected that. But the point is the trend was steadily downward despite eating lots of omega-3. Now, I'm not saying don't eat walnuts and hemp seeds and flax seeds. Probably did lots of good things in my body. My inflammation went down in my tissues. The lining of my arteries were probably healthier. It's a good thing to eat lots of omega-3 containing flaxseed, chia seeds, greens, etc. And I sent off at the same time finger stick test to a totally different lab, sent it off to Genova. This was back in uh, June of 2021, and my index there was 1.18. Now, that puts me in the low mid-range again. They must use a different calculation here. Here, it's still in the mid-range. But it's not, not high, that's for sure. And my DHA level was hovering in the low green here of uh, 0.77 and my EPA was up at 0.41 which was okay here for that. So uh, I went on that omega-3 rich food intensive and after a year uh, saw that my uh, omega-3 index at Genova went from 1.18 down to 0.76. And so this echoed the trend in a different lab at the Omega Quant lab. Uh, and my DHA level is now clearly down in, in the red deficient range. And the EPA had certainly slunk down towards the lower side as well. So clearly 
the trend is downward here. What am I going to do with these numbers? Here I am in March of 2023. I'm saying, Michael, what are you looking at here? What are you risking? Uh, it's not a matter of uh, losing a few more hairs if my DHA level goes down. We're talking about my memory, and we're talking about the ability to practice medicine with some of cognitive competence here. This is, uh, and once that's gone, there's no getting them back. And am I willing? Uh, to take that chance. At this point, I'm just not. So for that reason, reluctantly, I'm not a big fan of taking more supplements, but I've decided to start taking supplemental DHA slash EPA in the form of algae oil again. People say, well, that's not natural to be taking that. Well, it's not natural to live your life inside like we are. Uh, there's nothing natural about this life. We're all living in these very strange, unnatural settings. We're trying to make the best decisions we can. I've not decided on a brand. The dosage is going to be around 300 of DHA with around 250 of EPA, somewhere around there. I haven't decided on the exact ratios, but in, in that ballpark, I'll be taking most every day there. So uh, that's the update on omega-3 fatty acid supplementation for Dr. Clapper. I highly recommend you head over to Dr. Clapper's channel to watch his video in full. He goes into so much more depth, especially when it comes to the omega-3 testing. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe for more upcoming videos.